Today I am going to tell you all about a blockchain project named Internet Computer and where the price may be headed. Here is what I am going to cover in this video. What is Internet Computer? What is the price of ICP and which wallets are supported? And lastly, ICP price prediction. The Internet Computer is supposedly the last original Layer 1 blockchain project that is launching a revolutionary public network which provides a limitless environment for smart contracts that run at web speed, serve web, scale, and reduce compute costs by a million times or more. For those who don't know what Layer 1 architecture is, it is simply the hardware layer that has the underlying blockchain technology meaning Internet Computer isn't based on another blockchain protocol. Before we get into the details, let's talk about the Dfinity Foundation. The Dfinity is a non-profit organization that oversees a handful of research centers across the globe, and the Foundation's mission is to build, promote, and maintain the Internet Computer. Its accomplished team which includes many of the world's top cryptographers and distributed systems and programming language experts, with nearly 100,000 academic citations and 200 patents collectively, is committed to building advanced experimental technologies to improve the public internet. Moving back to Internet Computer, it extends the functionality of the public internet so that it can host back-end software transforming it into a global compute platform. Now I'll do my best to keep this simple and understandable, so here is the issue developers are facing when trying to create something on the internet, like websites, internet services, systems and even DeFi applications. Developers must use the legacy stack technology, where they need cloud, CDN, DNS services to make for example the website, running easily and accessible anywhere. And use it along with databases like AWS, web servers, plus other web services and frameworks, which will make the website faster and improve the user experience. As you can imagine it is very complex, and since a developer will likely store data, they need a firewall to protect their website, but with so many different components it can be easy to misconfigure the firewall forget to update any of the components, which could result in a hacker bypassing the firewall and stealing some data, and create a big mess for the developers. I may not be an IT wizard, but I think it would be hard to manage the different services I used for my website if it was being attacked, because who wants to depend on Amazon AWS if your website is under attack? Like the financial system, the different web services and frameworks are centralized and controlled by big companies. If you look for databases, Amazon monopolizes the whole database market. If you look for cloud services, Google is dominating that market. To combat the legacy stack technology, Finity created the Internet Computer Protocol, or ICP. Developers who would like to use ICP will need to download the Canister SDK and write their code in any programming language and compile to WebAssembly canisters. Canisters are computational units that include both program and state. A software canister is similar to a container in that both are deployed as a software unit that contains compiled code and dependencies for an application or service. So think of these canisters as smart contracts. Canisters may sound similar to containerization where the code is written once and runs anywhere allowing for applications to be decoupled from the environment, allowing for easy and reliable deployment. The canister differs from a container in that it also stores information about the current software state with a record of preceding events and user interactions. So you could essentially build anything web-related like websites, open internet services, enterprise systems, pan-industry platforms and DeFi applications. Also your data can be used in a beneficial way, and not just financially, because the internet computer provides a means to create internet services in a brand new way using autonomous software. 
These internet services can provide guarantees to users about how their data is processed, but even more importantly, can provide guarantees about the availability of the APIs they provide to other services that wish to incorporate the data or functionality they share, and this could help build some new and innovative services. So how does it really work? If a person wanted to release their website, which they have already compiled to WebAssembly canisters, all they will need are the nodes. Nodes for the internet computer are currently deployed through independent data centers located across the world that combine their computing power by running the internet computer protocol. These nodes do have a minimum requirement to ensure computational efficiency across the internet computer. There is a lot more about internet computer, so if you are interested check out their website. With that being said, let's move on to the token. The ICP token is a utility token. The ICP utility token is the primary mechanism that allows the broader internet community to participate in the governance of the internet computer network. ICP can also be dissolved and converted into cycles, which are then used to run websites and applications, as well as power computations on the internet computer via canisters. Canisters maintain an account balance to pay for the cost of communication, computation, and the storage consumed by their applications. The cost of computation is expressed in units of cycles. Cycles reflect the real costs of operations, including resources such as physical hardware, rack space, energy, storage devices, and bandwidth. In simple terms, a cycle unit represents the cost of executing a single WebAssembly instruction. Programs must be able to pay for complete execution, all or nothing, but the cost associated with cycles will make efficient programs cost-effective. By setting limits on how many cycles a canister can consume, the platform can prevent malicious code from draining resources. The relative stability of operational costs also makes it easier to predict the cycles that are required to process a million messages for example. Cycles can be compared to gas for Ethereum and credits for AWS, but have much farther reaching uses with regard to data, compute, and execution. Their design also inherently accounts for technological pitfalls, such as rapidly rising costs of usage. I know cycle won't matter to most of you, so here is what you can do with the ICP token. Neurons allow users to time lock their ICP utility tokens in order to be rewarded with voting power, which can be used to vote on proposals. Neurons can be made to follow each other in various ways such that they vote automatically representing a form of liquid democracy, meaning it copies a delegate you selected. So what is the price? The price sits around $100, with a market cap of $13 billion. There are currently 124 million ICP circulating out of the 469 million total supply. As for where you can buy ICP, these are the supported exchanges, I recommend using Binance, since they have more volume, and if you sign up to Binance with my link you can save some money on fees. So where is the price headed? The price has currently found great support around the $100 area. At its peak, and not from when it was just listed, the price almost reached $600 on Binance. I would say that it is very likely once Bitcoin flips bullish and break above 41,000. As for my second prediction I think ICP could place around number 5 in market cap, XRP seems like a good competitor and not technology wise, but I think XRP can go to $10 in this bull run, and a 10x would set the price of ICP at $1,000. As for resistance levels we got $120, which could easily be broken. Some other areas of resistance are $170, $200, $250, $350, $420, $500, and the $600. The psychological resistance levels with three-figure coins are the $50 and $100, but as you can see as before, the price may pull back before.
That's all I have for today's video, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. And as always, do your own research, practice good risk management and once again, I am not a financial advisor. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video.